Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Have you ever wondered what would happen if you poured a bucket of water into your e-bike battery? Well, wonder no more, because that is what I have done, accidentally. So, this battery that you see right here um, is a battery that I ordered from a supplier in China. Um, and I actually got it as part of a, a, an e-bike kit. Um, the quality of the e-bike kit was really, really good. But the, when this battery came, unfortunately it got damaged in shipping. And you can see the damage right here. This is a Hailong 1 battery, H-A-I-L-O-N-G-1. Um, it's 36 volts, lithium ion of course, and it is uh, a 10 amp hour. Um, so. What happened was, is it was it was outside, <clears throat> laying on the ground. I didn't put it out there. Well, I guess I did put it out there, but one of the kids had been using the battery on their electric bike. They ended up putting it on the ground upside down. You know, I walked by this battery a few times. I knew I should have picked it up, but I didn't. <clears throat> anyway, what happened was, oh, nasty. What happened was the it rained, it like, it was pretty intense rain and it happened a few days and at some point I went outside and I, I noticed the battery sitting there and I knew, I knew that that battery was completely screwed. You can see actually that we're missing, we're missing some screws, whatever. Um, it's a real shame because I think the actual build quality of the cells in size, like the assembly is probably pretty good, but we're about to take a look. Let's see what happened. Uh, also, when I when I picked this up off the ground and you know I turned it over, just an enormous amount of water came through here. This is the piece that was damaged when when I received the battery. Anyway, let's take a look. I couldn't find my screwdriver, but luckily I do have pieces, and I'm thinking this is probably not that strong. I was wrong. It is that strong. Hang on one second. Great news, I found an actual screwdriver. So let's get these four screws out and take a look at the damage inside. Um, when, I, when I picked it up and let all the water drain out of it, I was able to um, push the lights on the front. And usually when you do that, you have a red, a red light here and then some green lights and it still had, um, still had energy in the cells at that point enough to say that, gosh, you know, I think it was almost full. But since then, it has stopped working. Can't imagine why. Anyway, let's take a look. Almost there. With a nice set of keys. I can keep that in case the kids lose the other keys, right? Okay. See all the mud on there. This this thing was just so dirty. I do want to be careful as I take it apart. All right, so well, you can see. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see, but there is definitely still a lot of moisture in here. You can see it all the way down here. This is not. This hasn't dried out at all. <clears throat> see if we can pull this thing out. Here is the uh, the BMS. You can see all of the little sense wires going around the thing. If this thing suddenly catches fire, I'm going to have to throw it out the door. So hopefully it doesn't do that. But if it does, I guess it'll make for a good video, right? Oh, the hey, that final screw came out. Come here. Oh, this is nasty. It's getting, getting stuff all over my worktop. All right, let's see if we can we'll pull that out. Let's see if we can get this thing to, to come out of here. <laughs> it's funny because this is listed as a waterproof battery. I don't think it's as waterproof as they think. Oh my God, come on. All right. Whew. It's out of there. So, yeah, you can still, you can see there's a substantial amount of water 
resting on this thing. Um, what I want to know is how it looks under these cells. And I can tell already, it does not look good. Let's take some of this tape off. You can see right there some of the rust spots, but take a look at this. It is horrific. <clears throat> not, you know, not surprising, obviously. I'm curious if this was steel and not, um, gosh, nickel? And they usually use pure nickel for these. So I'm guessing it was not. And that's a real shame, you know? Um, yeah, this is clearly, this has clearly had it. I mean, there's no way. I, I didn't expect to be able to recover the battery after it was completely filled with water, obviously. Oh, but that's kind of, that's interesting. It's a little bit cleaner right there. Look at the difference in the way those pieces look. I'm just going to keep pulling, pulling little bits off. What would be interesting, yeah, look, see, right under there too. It's just random rust everywhere. I guess what I want to know is, do any of these cells still have power? <clears throat> I kind of think, I kind of think that they do, um, but I need to find my voltmeter. And um, unfortunately, due to the construction, I moved everything from my shed inside into this sort of uh, tornado pile, I guess I'll call it. And so I don't know where my voltmeter is. Um, so I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to go see if I can find the voltmeter. And if I can't find it, I'm just going to go buy one because I really want to know. Okay. Back in a sec. All right. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, but I had to fabricate something. I found a voltmeter. I couldn't find the um, the probes for it. Anyway, let's see. Let's see if we have any voltage because I didn't have any when I was messing with it initially. Um, you can see the volts right here. Mm, hang on. Having a hard time connect. There we go. I mean, I think I'm just not getting a good connection. Let's try that. Yeah, I mean, there's clearly. Oh, see, once I push a little harder, I get a nice solid voltage. So, okay, that's kind of cool. How much power do you think there is there? I wonder if we can do this. Because there's a charge port right here. I don't know if this is going to work. We can we can mess with it there, right? Um, where's the black piece? There it is. <laughs> this might not be such a good idea. Maybe I'm not doing some good things to myself right now. Okay, let's find out. Okay, we've got this attached. I'm going to put it up, up to a higher voltage, of course. Because if it does have any voltage, it's going to be a little higher than... What am I getting out of there? 6.6? .6? Hmm. Interesting. So that might mean... My guess is... My guess is that the cells themselves still work. That it's the BMS that has actually, you know, been toasted. I should be able to put this here. What am I getting now? Look at that. Another five some volts. <sighs> oh, it's really, really curious as to, you know, how dead this thing truly is. So here's, look, this is the red cord going down to the connector. And then there's a black cord. Where does the black cord go? Let's find out. Okay, so there's, here it is coming up here. And it's going all the way over to our friendly BMS, as you would expect. Hmm. Put 
then where does it go? You know what? It doesn't matter. Let's just see if we can get any higher voltages, shall we? Hey, check that one out. 20, 21.8. That was what I get here. 9.9. .9. Oh, I don't think we have to worry too much about this tape because, you know, the whole thing's ruined anyway. Four. Was that a, did that say 1.9? Seems a little low. That definitely seems off, you know. Well, but whatever. How about from the middle here? 4.8. It's kind of curious, huh? Am I still getting, oh, see, I'm getting a negative. How am I getting a negative? Do I have these back to front? I do have them back to front. No, I don't. Yes, I do. I'm just so confused. Right? Isn't that a negative number it's giving me? <clears throat> Whatever. It's clearly somewhat back to front. So it's clear that, you know, if I can get 21.6 volts out of the thing... Let's, let's go back to doing this the other way that we were doing it, right? Let's just check some individual cells because I think that kind of works a little better in some ways. So we can get down to like, here's one there, right? And there's, what are we getting on this one? Because we had a good three volts down here, but how about this one? 3.9, it's pretty good. See, what I don't want to do is blow the damn thing up. 3.8. 3.8. I don't know. I know they're, they've got some rust on them and everything. And that's not good. But I feel like they still work. I think what I want to do with this is cut the BMS off. Um, connect it. You know, maybe, maybe clean this up a little bit. Cut the BMS off connect it to uh, my bike and see how well it still performs. You know, did the water just damage the BMS? Or did it actually cause damage to these cells that were submerged in water for a good few days? You know, probably, probably longer than that even. Anyway, um, if you are interested in seeing the result of this, make sure you Stay tuned for that. Um, if you have a prediction as to what you think the end result would be of me just kind of trying to bring this battery back to life, uh, let me know down in the comments. I'm super curious to see. It's bittersweet because, you know, these batteries aren't cheap. And um, I really kind of liked this one. Um, with that said, I think it will be interesting to kind of dissect this a little bit because I think this battery is of pretty good build quality and you know there's there's signs of that right like the fact that they actually bothered to put the tape around the thing you've got all this padding here to keep it secure but also maybe you can't see this very well let me see if I can zoom into that I mean it's not going to be super good quality but let me just see if I can anyway yeah, I'm sorry, the quality sucks, but <clears throat> the um, the tabbing, the nickel strips, or they might be steel, oh, this is magnetic, the nickel strips, or maybe the steel strips, they're one piece, and some of these batteries that I've seen, they'll, you know, they'll run a piece of nickel strip across here, and then a separate piece across here, and that's super unreliable, um, with all of the vibrations, and, you know, you're relying on these welds, when a piece breaks off, um, it totally screws the battery up and actually it can be um, depending on how it how it's operating it can be a little risky anyway thanks for watching videos longer than I planned but you know I just wanted to open this up and take a look so yeah stay tuned and I will see uh, what I can do with it in another video where we'll try to test it on my e-bike and um, also, soon, I will be posting a video um, about putting an electric wheel onto the front of a tandem tricycle. 
So that should be pretty interesting. All right, thanks. Catch you guys later. Bye.